When watching week one of the preseason, it is a time in the NFL where young players and undrafted free agents and late round picks can stand out, and they can really try and make a name for themselves and solidify their spot on a 53-man roster, but it is also a time where you will have players like Trevor Lawrence playing, for example, but at the same time, you won't have franchise players like Dak Prescott and Kyler Murray for the Cowboys and Arizona Cardinals not play because it is, again, week one of the preseason. Season. But there was one player in particular for the Cleveland Browns that I was watching on Saturday night, and I could not help but think that he is going to be a future star. And I hope this is not an overreaction, but when you watch Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa of the Browns, their second round pick that they traded up for, he looked like everything in a future NFL star. He was there at the right time, he was aggressive but not over aggressive to the point where he was simply easily faked out because you can have that in corners at times where you can have an aggressive corner and simply they bite hard on a double move and then get toasted because they are simply too over aggressive. He was not that, he was very confident in his choices but again not overconfident to the point where he could have been easily faked out and the Jags could have exposed him in his weaknesses on tape for every NFL team to see. And we will break down Jeremiah Owosu Moa in today's video and why I think he will be a future NFL star. So without further ado, let's dive right into Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa's first NFL preseason game breakdown. So we're going to start with this play right here, it was a standard running play, it was in the second quarter of the Browns-Jags game, and as you're going to see eventually, every offensive lineman and the receiver at the top of the screen matches up with a Browns player, and the reason why I like this so much for Owosu Koromoa is he shifts his feet and essentially matches Carlos Hyde with what he's doing, matches his feet step for step in terms of the lateral quickness and eventually meets Carlos Hyde in the hole for a one yard gain. And Owosu Koromoa, one of his biggest knacks in the draft process was, is he a linebacker or is he a safety? Is he going to be too small to be a linebacker because he is just six foot one, 215 pounds? And again, is he going to be too slow to be a safety? And the answer is no, he is good to be a safety. He is also good to be a linebacker because of how fast he is and how much was required of him at the University of Notre Dame. And we start to see that here on this play against the Jags. Now, you may be thinking, why is this play so good? And the reason is because Owosu Kormoa is very patient here on this play. And not only that, he guesses right and Kide runs right into him and he stops him for a one yard gain. So in reality, what could have happened had Owosu Kormoa read this play wrong is he could have guessed the wrong hoe and Carlos Hyde could have had a 10 or a 15 yard or even maybe even more gain. But because of Jeremiah Owosu Kormoa, and eventually I'm going to start saying J, okay? The reason why he was so good on this play is because he prevented a 15 yard gain by simply staying his ground and reading the play correctly. Now this next play that we have was actually just two plays later because the previous Carlos Hyde run was on first and 10 and this as you can see is on third and six and what Jeremiah does here is he shows that he's going to blitz so if you kind of want to nitpick and say oh well that's one bad thing he did he showed too early that he was going to blitz but in the same sense the Jags still couldn't block him. He had a free run to the quarterback, well, free run with the running block to chip in and help. He gets by the running back because it was a not good block and a combination of Jeremiah just being a good football player and sacks Gardner Minshew for two tackles in three plays, including one TFL and a sack. So this was a great play by Jeremiah, who also led the Browns in tackles with seven in his preseason debut. And this is the type of thing that I love to see from him and that football fans, and especially Browns, Browns fans should love to see from him moving forward. He is a very good football player, and by the way, this was with backup defensive linemen in there, so it's not like Miles Garrett was there to take two blocks and to have solely the focus of the offensive line in this specific play. Now, what's only going to benefit JOK and fellow 2021 draftee and first round pick Greg Newsom is having other players on the field at the same time as them that are all pro caliber and in Miles's case, defensive player of the year caliber. Now, obviously, we could say Denzel Ward could be and probably will be a pro bowler at some point, but having those guys on the field with them at the same time to alleviate some of the pressure will only help them moving forward in their professional careers. And to see JOK already doing this with... He he was clearly the best defensive player on the field on the Brown side of the ball is nothing short of encouraging for Browns fans, Browns coaching staff and his teammates, and of course discouraging to see if you are a fan of the Bengals, Steelers and Ravens, and I do think JOK will be a very good defensive player for years to come. 
And if you watched the Browns game last night, then you had to know that this play was going to be shown, and it is everything you like to see in a future defensive player's arsenal of weapons and what he can do good when reacting to plays called by the offense. What we have here is a screenplay, and JOK recognizes that pretty much right away. He dips around the shoulder of an offensive lineman in the open field, which is a lot harder than it sounds, because imagine someone the size of a Quentin Nelson, a 6 foot 5, 330 pound lineman running at you and not only do you have to not get absolutely drilled by him as they have over 100 pounds in weight on you but then you have to still be athletic enough to go make a play on an NFL or even if this guy does not make the roster for the Jaguars a college free agent that is better than 99% of football players in the world you have to go make a play on him in the open field which JOK as we see definitely does that and this type of play right here is something only the coaches love and it is only positives from here in Cleveland with JOK after his first preseason game. Now, this is the final play we are going to discuss and break down for JOK's preseason debut because at the end of the day, it is ultimately a preseason debut and not a NFL playoff game where he had 12 tackles and had three TFLs and an interception and was the absolute reason why the Browns won a playoff game to send them to an AFC Championship game or a Super Bowl. But this play right here was a first down. JOK reads it beautifully, and this goes back to the point where I said where he was aggressive, but not to the point Point where he was overly aggressive where anyone could have faked him out and that is critical at the NFL level is you can anyone can be aggressive there's no starting point to being aggressive but the point is is being aggressive to the point where you're not going to be faked out very easily and he certainly was not and certainly not on this specific play as it was a minus two yard gain for the Jacksonville Jaguars this was a specific play where JOK shot the gap, there was a hole there, and once the running back received the handoff, he was already getting hit by JOK as there was absolutely nowhere to go. And as we close up this video today, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm not one for making immediate breakdowns or immediate conclusions after preseason games, but I do want to say I was very much looking forward to JOK's preseason debut, as he was without a doubt one of my favorite players in the class, and if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, Wild, and you know that, and a couple of my other guys are Justin Fields, Najee Harris, and Rashad Bateman of the Ravens. Those were my four favorite prospects in the 2021 class, and JOK definitely headed that. He was, without a doubt, one of my favorite prospects coming out of Notre Dame, and I do think this is the start to the validation of the draft pick that the Browns made, and I was all for my Minnesota Vikings trading up to get JOK in the second round, but ultimately they did not, but I do think the Browns will reap the benefits of having JOK on the roster for probably the next five to six years and maybe even longer. And the possibility of JOK winning Defensive Rookie of the Year again, this is leaping to things, but JOK winning the Defensive Rookie of the Year isn't exactly out of the equation because the Browns linebacking core isn't all that good, which in turn could lead to JOK just racking up tackles and having plays like we saw in the last one where defensive linemen split the gap for him and he just makes plays because of the defensive linemen splitting the gap where he can easily just run through and make these plays plays that linebackers do. And JOK was not in coverage a lot to the point where he was getting targeted, but I don't have any concerns with him moving forward because of what we saw him consistently do during his time at Notre Dame. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world. And until next time, have a great day, and if you ever have any video suggestions, please leave them in the comments. And until next time, have a great day. Love you guys. Deuces. Peace.